The question is simple yet seemingly impossible to answer. Is there a creator of the universe? The question of God's existence has been a question that everybody thinks about at some point. I can say that I'm included in this group. In the last few years of my life, I can say that not a day has gone by without thinking about God. The questions of God's existence is one of the most important questions a person can ever answer. It ultimately can very well help answer the question of why we exist and the meaning of life. After searching with my whole heart for true answers, I like to present one key reason that I believe shows that God exists. This line of reasoning has been called the moral argument by the philosophers who created it. It goes like this. Premise one, if God does not exist, then no objective moral values and duties exist. Premise two, objective moral values and duties actually exist. Conclusion, therefore, God exists. First, if there is no God, then there are no objective moral values and duties. Let me give an illustration to explain what it means to be subjective or objective. Here I have something that tastes good. And here I have something that tastes bad. Now, there's no right or wrong answer to the question of whether a specific food tastes good or bad. It may have to do with our societal upbringing, some type of evolutionary protection system, or just personal opinion. Food taste is subjective. However, here in my right hand, I have three Jenga blocks. And here in my left hand, I have two Jenga blocks. This is an objective fact. Regardless of opinion or other factors, it is a fact that I have a specific number of blocks in each hand. So when I say that if there is no God, there are no objective morals, this means that morality without God is just like how the taste of something may vary from person to person. It's subjective. Just to be clear, if you believe there is no God, you definitely can still have some good moral values. The problem is if no God exists, then morality is just something that developed in our minds and has no real value. So how do we know that if there is no God, there are no objective morals? For many, atheism follows what is called naturalism, which means that only what can be shown by science is correct. Since moral values cannot be shown by the scientific method, they must be subjective according to atheism. Even if you're willing to go beyond science, without God, you cannot have objective moral uh, values since there's no other plausible foundation for objective morality. Several different foundations for objective morality other than God have been raised. On a bus ride back from a school concert, some of my friends and I actually got into a great discussion about the foundations uh, for objective morals. One of my friends suggested, hey Simon, maybe what if advances human society has become in our minds uh, objective morality? This cannot be the foundation for objective morality though, since it's easily possible that society could have determined a different set of moral values to be correct, which has happened many times. If society is the foundation for absolute right and wrong, then we must say that no two societies ever could or ever have had contradicting moral values and duties, which isn't true. In addition to this, why is our morality biased towards the benefit of our species? Why is only what contributes to human progress and not the uh, progress of other species like dogs or cows seen as objectively right? Remember, without God, we are just another type of animal. Besides, what benefits society and ourselves from time to time can change with the environment. So this cannot be the foundation for objective morality since it can change. So we must conclude that if society or ourselves were the foundation for morality, then morality wouldn't be objective. The second possible foundation for objective morality is evolution. But this also is not a sufficient foundation for objective morality since it's also easily possible that evolution could have deemed a different set of moral values to be correct. In Charles Darwin's work entitled The Descent of Man, he wrote, If men were reared under precisely the same conditions as hybees, there can hardly be a doubt that our unmarried females would, like the worker bees, think it a sacred duty to kill their brothers, and mothers would strive to kill their fertile daughters, and no one would think 
of interfering. In other words, if our early environment had been different, a completely different set of morals may now have existed, making them not objective. Again, without God, we're just animals. So there's ultimately no difference between us and the bees. If evolution was the foundation for morality, then ultimately morality would not be objective. The third possible foundation is simply nothing. Why can't there just be no moral foundation? Morality just exists. Firstly, that will mean that if no one existed, moral values like love would just exist. This, of course, is problematic since morality is a property of, property of beings. The other thing is if morality had no foundation, we would still end up with no objective moral values or duties since we could say that they just exist as an abstract idea, no different than love. Why am I obliged to believe love is correct and hate is wrong? They're both on equal footing. Without a lawgiver, there's no obligation to choose one over the other. Thirdly, how is it possible that our evolution and society may have somehow aligned with this abstract idea of objective morality? In the end, if there were no foundation for morality, then morality would not be objective. So why is God the only possible foundation for objective morality? The reason the foundation for morality must be a being is because morals are properties of beings, not properties of objects or things. Also, when it comes to moral duties, a duty cannot come from a thing, but is an obligation that comes from another being. What type of being does this have to be though? We ultimately can only stop the search for a sufficient foundation once we reach a being that is the ground for the morality in its own nature, since any being that isn't the ground for morality in its own nature would be getting its obligations from something else. This would then require the being to be the perfect example of morality, expressing moral perfection through their own nature. So if God were the foundation for morality, then morality would be objective. Now, of course, I'm not saying right now that if you don't believe in God, you think murder is just a matter of opinion. What I am saying is that God doesn't exist in, in reality, and our sense of morality is just subjective, regardless of beliefs. As one philosopher, philosopher put it, take God out of the picture, and all you're left with is an ape-like creature on a speck of solar dust beset with delusions of moral grandeur. But with God, our morality does hold to be universally true. Now, premise two. There are objective moral values and duties. Objective moral values and duties actually exist. In the same way that we trust our five senses, we trust our moral senses to be telling us the truth, meaning we have no good reason to be skeptical of our own moral senses. While in one sense, we can't show that objective morality exists, it's in the same sense that we can't show that the natural world exists. We believe the natural world exists is real because of our senses. And we also can believe that the moral order is real because of our moral experience. Anyone who denies objective morals exist believes that morals are just like taste. They depend on opinion, culture, etc. Here are some examples. The murder is equally justified as the person who donates to charity. The racist person just has a different opinion than the person fighting for equality. The person who lays their life down for their friend is on a moral standpoint, equivalent to a human trafficker. The person who spends their entire life working on getting a good salary has done nothing morally superior to the person who robs for a living. You can't believe that all this is true, do you? You have to accept that objective moral values and duties exist to believe things like murder, racism, theft, etc. are factually immoral, regardless of one's opinions and backgrounds. But what if we just merely think that morality is subjective? What if we just 
think murder is objectively wrong because that is how we're raised and how our biology is, biology is designed. How can we even know if our morals are objectively true, let alone provide justification for our moral understandings since we're using our brains that have been so heavily influenced to answer the question? Hold on, hold on, that doesn't work. Just because our perception of morality might be shifted from culture and evolution, that doesn't mean that our more beliefs are not true. If I'm given a tough math question to solve, and I guess the answer, and I was correct, the fact that I solved it just by guessing doesn't automatically mean my answer wasn't correct. A lousy method can still lead to a correct conclusion. So also, our morals can still be objective, even though society might be influencing our views and making our vision of morality unclear. But can I be justified in believing that my moral experience is correct? After all, evolution is only targeted at survival, not truth, and society often changes. So how can we even trust our minds in telling us what is right or wrong? One problem with believing we cannot justify that objective morals exist is that it assumes atheism is correct. If God does exist, he could have directed evolution and society to give true objective morality. The bigger problem, though, is that if we are skeptical of what our brains tell us, everything we ever know or think about becomes unreliable, since everything is in the context of society and evolution. This means you should be skeptical of everything, including all of science. It comes in the context of society and evolution, so how can you trust it? In the end, we can therefore believe that when we think that morality is objective, it really is objectively true and justifiable. Some might question the existence of a creator based on the evil we see in the world. While I wish I had the time to dive into the question of evil, I implicitly dealt with it. You see, evil cannot invalidate God's existence because the very existence of, of good and evil would be subjective without God. So what is considered evil or sin would just depend on opinion and development, just like food that tastes bad. Let me give another example. While something that the atrocities of World War II would invalidate the existence of a morally perfect God, it's actually the fact that the things in World War II were considered objective atrocities that we have to conclude there is an objective moral standard for good and evil, and you cannot have this standard without someone who gives a standard, God. There's several more arguments for the existence of God, and it would take a very long time to give reasonable, thorough explanations for all of them. I'm just scratching the surface. But today what we've seen is that objective moral values and duties cannot exist without God, yet they do exist, implying that God exists. If you accept these two premises, it follows that God exists, who, as the foundation for morality, would be morally perfect and would be the standard of how we should think and act. It's simply not enough to label all types of beliefs about God, whether it be atheism, theism, or pantheism, as you're invalid, since they all logically contradict each other. Either God exists or God does not exist. And the answer to this question is of paramount importance. Once one accepts that God exists, they begin to ask extremely important questions. Can I know God? What happens when we break God's moral obligations to us? And, and does God care about me? The answer to these questions, I think, can change your view forever as it did for me. And it's a simple matter of being honest and open to God. As of now, we're confronted with three possible beliefs. Either we believe that all sense of right and wrong, things like murder and all that is an illusion or just opinion, or we believe that we can ground morality in something outside God, or we accept that God exists. The choice is yours.